Hello and welcome to the Scatterfold channel. And today, let me bring you guys the current best CPU and GPU combos you can center your next PC build around in 2024. So if you don't know where to start with your next PC build and you don't know what processor and graphics card you should be aiming for in a certain budget, then that is the purpose of this video. I have a bunch of different combos, whether if you want to build the best possible bank for your buck gaming PC, a gaming PC that is a bit more future proof for upgrades, or a gaming PC that can also double up with some content creation and streaming, I'll be showcasing four different tiers of combos. Those being entry-level combos, mainstream combos, mid-range combos, and high-end combos. So there should be a CPU and GPU combo for anyone who is watching this video. Now, if this all sounds complex, I don't blame you. There's a lot of terminology being thrown around, but if you wanted to build a gaming PC around one of these combos, I have a website for you called PCBuilds.gg. It is my personal website that I list my current, up-to-date, and best possible PC builds on that is all neatly laid out in a list. So if you wanted to copy any of those builds and then just build a PC around one of those lists, then that is the whole point of the website. It's literally just PC builds on a website. So with all that said, in addition to pcbills.gg, which you should totally check out. I'll have links to every single one of the CPU, GPU combos linked in the description below, along with recommended motherboards and RAM kits, which I'll also be going into in today's video. So finally, with all that out of the way, let's get started. So a question I know a lot of you are gonna ask, given the timing of this video is, should I build a PC now or should I wait? Because this fall, we're probably gonna get some new processors from AMD and Intel, and in terms of graphics cards, I think we might finally get the next generation of NVIDIA, Radeon, and even Intel GPUs. So I bet a lot of you may be thinking, oh, should I wait? You know, am I gonna be missing out? Well, the simple answer is right now, it's a very excellent time to build a PC because I've been doing some price tracking, and prices right now, are the same as where they were back during Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Yeah, so it's a pretty good time to build a PC. But to address the original question, the only people who should wait to build their PC if they wanna get you know, a next generation processor or graphics card, oh, you know what, let me just bring this over, are these people. People who want the flagship processors and graphics cards are the ones who should wait to build their PC because Nvidia is gonna release their next, you know, 5090, AMD is gonna release their next 8800 or 8900, whatever. Intel is gonna release their next whatever. AMD is gonna release their next whatever super high-end CPU. Basically, they're gonna release their flagship products first. And for 95% of you who are watching this video, you realistically can't afford this. None of you guys can afford to drop two grand on a graphics card or even a grand and like 600 bucks on a CPU. If you're at all a mainstream PC gamer or a budget PC gamer, a lot of those mainstream products that are gonna be next generation probably aren't gonna come out until 2025. And we're talking like summer of 2025. This is just speaking on history. AMD, Nvidia, and Intel don't release their mid-range and entry-level next generation products until like six months after their expensive flagship products. So you should only wait if the stuff you see here on the table interests you. If it's so expensive that you can't look at it any further, do not worry. Like I said, prices are at an all-time low right now for a lot of components. It's a good time to build a PC. So let's kick things off with the best entry level CPU and GPU combos. And once again, links to all the combos I'm gonna discuss right now in this video are gonna be linked in the description below if you wanna check any of them out. But for our cheapest combo, this is for basic 1080p gaming. I want you to go with a Ryzen 5 3600 used for about 60 bucks. Grab yourself a brand new B450M motherboard, the M stands for micro ATX, it's just smaller, it's gonna save you a bit of money. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, can't go wrong with most speeds nowadays. And then a used RX 5700, or a brand new one if you're able to snag one from AliExpress, like what I did in my $400 gaming PC build. Now, if you get lucky, you might be able to snag a used 5700 XT for about $150, but I've been seeing the prices of these graphics cards slowly go up in price. And they're still by far the best used graphics cards you can get, either the 5700 XT or the 5700. But I mean, if you wanna build bang on a $500 gaming PC build in 2024, that is the 
technically best, you're gonna wanna get a used 3600 and then a used graphics card. So you gotta go used really if you want the most bang for your buck. So my recommendations for those would have to be like going onto Facebook Marketplace, going on eBay, Craigslist, or my personal favorite, java.gg, and picking up something from there. But then if you wanted a bit more performance, now we get into all brand new CPU and GPU combos. So nothing from here on out is going to be used, but just keep in mind, literally any used graphics card in 2024 is going to hold a lot more bang for the buck than buying something new. So if you wanted to kick things up a little bit for a 1080p plus gaming PC combo, look at getting a Ryzen 5 5500 with a Radeon RX 6600M. This is the exact same graphics card that I used in my $700 gaming PC build guide and it performed just like a regular RX 6600, the only differences being that I picked it up from AliExpress, took about two and a half weeks to ship and the box looks like this. Don't be alarmed though, it's literally a 6600, just different. And I literally looked inside the graphics card. It looks like it hasn't been used at all or anything like that. It's basically brand new for 170 bucks. Now, the only drawbacks with this combo is that there's no AV1 codec that comes with the RX 6600 or the 6600M. That's just because it's a last generation AMD graphics card. And AV1 is really awesome if you want to do any sort of game streaming or game recording right now through OBS. It is by far the best codec, way better than NVEC, which is NVIDIA's codec, or even AMD's proprietary codec. But just note you won't have that at your disposal. You'll have the traditional AMD Relive if you wanna record or stream games. Honestly, it's not too much of a deal breaker. You can still stream quite fine with that graphics card. Plenty of people have done it, but I'm being really picky here. Also, the 5500 is a non-PCI Gen 4.0 CPU. So although it's six cores and 12 threads for under hundred bucks, you can't necessarily pair it up with the best budget graphics card right now under $200 because this requires PCI Gen 4.0 to be run at its full speeds. And the 5500 from AMD doesn't offer that. If at any moment you are getting bored or like I'm losing you, I'll try my best to bring you back with some, I don't know, Fortnite terms. But now let's get into my 1080p plus gaming PC. And this is my favorite combo out of the entry level series. So you're gonna wanna go with an i3-12100 and then an Intel B660M, so micro ATX, DDR4 motherboard, because you can get DDR5 or DDR4 motherboards that are on the B660 chipset, but we wanna save money, so we're gonna go with the older DDR4 motherboard. Same old 60 gigabyte kit of RAM, 3600 megahertz, cast latency of 16 or 18, whatever's cheaper, go for that. But for the graphics card, go with the Intel Arc A580. Now the reason why, you wanna go with this, say over the previous combo, is that the 12100 supports PCI Gen 4.0, which is going to allow us to tap into the full speeds of the Intel Arc A580, which is the best budget graphics card under $200. This is comfortably faster than the RX 6600, which was the previous best graphics card under $200, but not anymore thanks to continual driver updates from Intel's team and pushing this graphics card even further in terms of performance. Another advantage with getting this graphics card specifically is that you have access to the Intel Quick Sync codec, which is the best video editing codec there is out there. It has the most support for different types of footage. So if you're at all a professional videographer and you're shooting stuff, say at like 4K, compressed H.264 log. This fortunately has the quick sync codec at your disposal so you can load up DaVinci Resolve or Premiere and utilize not only the best budget gaming graphics card but also the best budget video editing graphics card to take care of that footage for you. Which again, this is the 12100F and the F stands for no integrated graphics. So if you were to say get a regular i3-12100 that would already come with integrated Intel graphics, which would come with the Intel Quick Sync codec. But if you wanna save money, go with this because it already comes with the Arc A580. And this is the most expensive, quotations, combo of the bunch. Expect to build about a $600 PC build with this CPU and GPU. And fortunately, you've got plenty of upgrade room from this i3. So if you wanted to upgrade to a faster CPU in the future, you can do that. Now, if you skip to this part in the video, probably wanna get the most bang for your buck possible. You want a PC that can either achieve 
the most FPS per dollar, or can have the best upgrade path if you want to save the most money in the long run, or if you want something that can not just do gaming, but also content creation and other forms of editing <laughs> and maybe other things as well. So let's start things off with, I think, the most upgrade proof path. So if you want to get yourself set up on the latest standard from AMD, that being the AM5 socket, you will have support for upgrades until 2026 and beyond. So if you don't want to go with the hassle of replacing your motherboard and getting a whole new kit of RAM, if you were to say buy a last generation Ryzen processor, you can completely eliminate that with the Ryzen 5 7500F. This is the number one best budget gaming processor in my opinion. Like I said, this is gonna put you on the AM5 socket. So if you at all wanted to upgrade to a future 8,000, 9,000, or even 10,000 series Ryzen processor on the AM5 socket, you can totally do that with this CPU, which can be said for the older Ryzen processors because these are pretty much capped off at the 5800X 3D, which is the fastest AM4 CPU on the market, which is about the same speed as the 7600X. Yeah, so the best of what AMD can offer on the last generation AM4 socket matches the current mid-range Ryzen processor from AM5. So AMD can only go up from AM5 in terms of performance. So that's why I'm not super crazy about investing in a last generation AMD processor in this price category. Anyways, like I said, for this first combo, get yourself a 7500F from AliExpress. Yeah, it's gonna take maybe three weeks to ship from your house, but like literally, I'm, I'm not joking, guys. I've bought one, two, and three 7500Fs from AliExpress. You get such good value for performance, and again, that AM5 socket to play around with. And then for the motherboard, check out an A620 motherboard, that's micro ATX. Now you only wanna go with one of these, and it's the same one that I used in my $700 gaming PC build guide. That one is the best A620 motherboard you can get. But just note, as you'll see later on in this segment, I really think you should go with a B650 motherboard if you can afford it, just because those higher end motherboards that are more expensive are just gonna last you much better in the long run in terms of upgrading and overall quality. But then any 32 gigabyte kit of DDR5 memory at any speed is honestly gonna be fine as long as you aren't looking at the top end kits. But the best bang for your buck kits are gonna be those that are either at a speed of 5,600 megahertz with a cast latency of 32, or a speed of 6,000 megahertz with a cast latency of 30. And you're looking at spending around probably 90 to $100 on either of those RAM kits. And then for the graphics cards, Honestly, you can go with any in this segment. Here, I have the A580, the 6600M, or the A750, which the A750 is basically an A580 on a little bit of extra juice. Sometimes you'll see a noticeable bump in FPS on the A750 over the A580, and sometimes not. That's why I rate the A580 a bit higher than the A750, because I think this just offers more bang for your buck. It's kind of like a toned down A750. But you also have the 6600 or the 6600M at your disposal if you wanted to say go with one of these from AMD, if you wanted something that is a bit more reliable in terms of driver support. And I mean, the thing with the 7500F is like, it's so fast, it's not gonna be bottlenecked unless you go with like a 4090 or a 7900 XTX. But if you wanted a PC that is a bit more focused on content creation and maybe even purpose-built video editing. Then for this combo, which it is gonna be about $200 more expensive than the one that I just showed you, look at picking up an RTX 4060 and an i5-12600K. There you go. Let me explain. The 12600K, make sure you get this one and not the KF, because you want the integrated graphics. Like I just said, those Intel integrated graphics offer the Intel Quick Sync codec, which is the best video editing codec out there. So if you do any sort of professional video work, you're gonna want an Intel CPU. So get the 12600K with those integrated graphics. And then for the GPU, pick up a 4060. I recently benchmarked this in a video comparing this and the 7600 XT and some other graphics cards around $300. And we gotta give it a little bit of credit it is the cheapest RTX 4000 GPU from NVIDIA. It is the cheapest entry point to getting access to the latest technologies of DLSS, AI, 
frame generation, and the best ray tracing performance for a budget graphics card. So we do need to give it credit for that. But an at risk that I have here is that this is eight gigabytes of VRAM, which is going to not last you long if you want to play at 1440p. This is going to be fine for 1080p. If you want to keep this graphics card and you're on a 1080p monitor, you're going to be fine for years to come. But if you play at 1440p or above, the eight gigabytes of VRAM on this graphics card will not age well over the years. And we're already seeing that right now in 2024 in certain games. For instance, I benchmarked Forza Motorsport on the 4060 with eight gigabytes of VRAM versus its main competition, the 7600 XT with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And as you can see, we ran into a VRAM deficit immediately on the 4060. So although the 4060 has the better software, Radeon generally has the better hardware in this price category. But nonetheless, if you are content creation and video editing focused, or if you at all dabble with 3D modeling or AI, 4060. But if you wanted something with a little bit more oomph, a bit more power, then right now in 2024, you wanna go with the Ryzen 5 7500F paired with a 7600 XT. Once again, I just benchmarked this graphics card in a recent video you're welcome to check out. And all things considered, it's not necessarily fantastic because this graphics card right here, the 6700 is faster than the 7600 XT. But the 6700 XT, from what I've been reading in the comment sections of many of my videos, is going out of stock because this is a last generation product. It is going out of stock. You may not be able to get your hands on it anymore, which costs the same as the 67 or the 7600 XT. So this graphics card is slowly on its way out, which leaves us with this one, which all things considered gets the job done. It's faster than the 4060 and it comes with double the VRAM. So in terms of VRAM, you are well set at 1440p, which is why this is my entry level 1440p CPU and GPUs combo, most ideal for a sub $1,000 PC build. But if I had to tell you, my next combo is probably one of my other favorites in this video. All right, so while I'm putting up GPU and CPU boxes for the next combo, I would just like to politely ask that you like this video. Um, it's tough out there, guys. <laughs> it's tough out there, man. The YouTube algorithm, it operates on its own whim. And there's little us creators can do to control it. Except for you guys, because the more likes a video gets, the better it usually does in the algorithm. That is the only tried and true way of helping videos out. So if you are one of those people who want to help out the Scatterbolt channel, giving a like is such an easy way to do it. So that'd be greatly appreciated. So like I just said, I think the next combo I'm going to discuss for about an extra like 150 bucks is a lot better than that 7600 XT, 7500 F combo I just discussed because this would be perfect for a $1,000 PC build, which is to once again, go with the 7500 F. This CPU is absolutely goaded for PC gaming. And then for the graphics card, you got two options. One of these is a personal favorite of mine and the other one got a much needed price reduction, starting with the one that got a price reduction, the 7700 XT. The new updated MSRP for this graphics card is $420. And to already put this out there, because I know I'm going to get asked about it, people are going to be like, but where's the 4060 Ti? Screw it. Yeah, screw the 4060 Ti. Like, get this instead. It's way better for gaming. If you even wanted a GPU for content creation, we're going to cover that real soon. But the 4060 Ti is just... No, no. This though is pretty good. This is gonna get you well into 1440p gaming. It's just a more juiced up 6700 XT, really good. But ultimately, if you're able to get your hands on it, the RX 6800 has blessed us with coming back from the dead just for a little bit longer at a cheaper price than the 7700 XT. And I can already tell you from a previous video of mine, this RX 6800 not only has better hardware than the 7700 XT, but it also is faster and it's cheaper by about 30 to 40 bucks. So if you're able to get your hands on a 6800, you are gonna be so set. I think out of this entire video, the RX 6800 is the best bang for your buck AMD graphics card there is, period. You will be so set. and. Just like with the RX 6600 6600M, the only drawback is that this doesn't come with the AB1 codec. 
which could be a little bit upsetting to a few of you. But again, you have the regular AMD Relife codec you can work with for game streaming and game recording through OBS. And it's not gonna be that much of a deal breaker unless you're already like a streamer who's making it. So at that point, you're probably looking at graphics cards that can support AV1. But let's say you had an inferiority complex and you're like, hmm, I need an even faster computer. Well, that's cool because more or less, keep the same CPU, We'll go ahead and bump up the motherboard to a full-sized ATX B650 motherboard because we probably want a bigger case for these higher-end graphics cards we're gonna shove into this PC, so we want some more cooling. Also for the RAM, like, at this point, might as well go with the 6,000 megahertz cast latency 30 kits of RAM because they probably should. I'm not gonna get too much into the details, but what I will get into the details of are the graphics card choices. This is... I mean, the 6800 was already really good, but this is also very excellent as well. The Radeon RX 7800 XT. You've probably heard tons of reviews already on this graphics card. It is, it is the end all be all for 1440p gaming. It offers so much hardware and performance for the money. And what's crazy about it now is that it's finally receiving discounts. And that's really odd because this graphics card was already a great value at MSRP without any discounts and it's now getting discounts because of a certain graphics card that also just came out. If the 7800 XT was, we'll use religious terms here, I'm not, you know, not an expert here, but if this is Jesus, <laughs> then this is Jesus resurrected for round two. The 7900 GRE, this is about 60 bucks more expensive than the 7800 XT, but the good news is that you're getting an equivalent increase in performance. For about 10% more of the cost of a 7800 XT, you're getting at times 10% or more better performance on this graphics card. It was so good, they brought it from China here to the United States and to the rest of the world, and I'm glad they did because the 7800 XT was already AMD's best graphics card, and this one might have just topped it barely. So you have two amazing options here for flat out, no compromises, 1440p gaming with some basic streaming and content creation. But if you wanted to focus a little more on content creation, video editing, 3D modeling, AI, all that fun stuff, then for that, we're gonna switch things up, go back to Intel because once again, the Intel Quick Sync codec is the best for video editing. And then if you wanted to dabble at all with AI or 3D modeling or anything that uses CUDA cores, pick up a 4070 Super. This is like the 6800, NVIDIA's best priced graphics card right now, which is kind of weird to say. I mean, obviously graphics cards get better as the price goes up, but in the case of NVIDIA, they are like significantly better. It's weird, but it works like that. The 4070 Super very much holds its own in 2024. I recommend it if you're looking into an NVIDIA graphics card. It is stupid fast. I made a PC build with it just recently, and it had zero issues running any games at 1440p. You could probably even do 4K if you wanted, but my at risk in this combo for the 4070 Super, which is the same as the 4060, is that this comes with 12 gigabytes of VRAM which is fine right now in 2024 for 1440p gaming, but it may not be enough beyond 2024, say like two years from now, if you wanted to run GTA 6 at 1440p with all the graphics and stuff maxed out, the 12 gigabyte VRAM buffer on this graphics card may run out for a game like that. Whereas it won't if you had a 16 gigabyte graphics card like one of these. That said though, the 4070 Super is still super damn fast and is on the list of very few NVIDIA graphics cards I am okay with backing. But this would be ideal for a sub $1,500 PC build. You can literally copy my $1,500 PC build I just made on my YouTube channel and just use an Intel processor or use what I show off on PCBuilds.gg if you wanna build a similar content creation focused build with this combo. So we are nearing the end of this video and if you felt this video so far has been informative but also entertaining then i think you should subscribe to the scatterful channel because a lot of my videos are like this i try to inform you guys but also dumb things down from here and there and blend a little bit of my own personality so if you enjoy these kinds of videos you should totally come back for more so give it a subscription if you want but now we've reached the big leagues and i'll be completely honest with you as all of these combos are going to suggest no less than 4k gaming if you think of at all pairing a 1440p monitor with any of these high-end combos, 
you are literally throwing away money. This is only reserved for 4K gaming. Or if you're like an FPS esports nerd who needs like 400 FPS at 1440p for the best possible Fortnite or Apex CS2 gameplay or whatever. Even then, these combos are gonna smoke any game at 4K. So this first combo is like my sensible 4K gaming PC combo. So in my opinion, if you're gonna be on the AM5 socket, all or nothing, get a 7800X 3D. I think picking this up at $360 is so good. I don't think you even wanna consider any lower end Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 5 CPUs other than the 7500F. Because if you're looking at buying a CPU in the upper 200 to lower $300 price category, just jump right to this CPU. It is so fast thanks to that 3DV cache. And if you literally look at the specs of the CPU, the L3 cache on the 7800X3 is so much larger than say a 7700X or 7700. And even more so than a Ryzen 9 7900 or 7900X. The 7800X 3D stands alone. It is in its own category. It is the best gaming CPU, period, in 2024. Better than this one, but this one's not done yet. I'm, I'm gonna cover it soon. So get a 7800X 3D, go ahead and reward yourself with an X670 motherboard, so something that's a little bit more higher end because we're going up in price. Might as well invest in a slightly higher end motherboard than just a B650 motherboard. Let's go ahead and max out the memory with the fastest possible speed to lowest cache latency with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory that works on Ryzen for about 110 bucks. And then for the GPUs, I've got two options for you. The best option, which is the RX 7900 XT or the RTX 4070 Ti Super. So between these two graphics cards right here, if you want the faster option, get the 7900 XT. It comes with 20 gigabytes of VRAM versus the 4070 Ti Super's 16. In terms of raw performance, the 7900 XT still beats the 4070 Ti Super at 4K and 1440p. And it's also $100 cheaper. I think, according to my last GPUs of the month video, the 7900 XT is probably AMD's best value graphics card for an RX 7000 GPU. So for RX 6000, it's the 6800, like I just said, but for RX 7000, you are gonna be so set if you invest in this $700 7900 XT. It's a baby XTX, but it's so good for the price. But I will give credit where it's due, and that is to the RTX 4070 Ti Super. A lot of reviewers don't like this graphics card, and I can totally see where they're coming from because the cheaper, yet faster, 7900 XT beats this for 100 bucks less. But at the end of the day, the 4070 Ti Super is being sold at $800 without any markups, which can't be said for the other NVIDIA graphics card we're gonna cover soon, but it also comes with 16 gigabytes of VRAM and that is a comfortable amount for 4K gaming now and also for a few years into the future. 16 is good. It's what a lot of these graphics cards should be. So the 4070 Ti Super really just needed more VRAM and that's what it has. So that's why I'm comfortable in recommending it. If you wanna tap in a little bit more into 3D modeling or AI applications, or once again, anything that uses CUDA cores. But if you're strictly about gaming, and maybe like taking your streams and then throwing them on like a YouTube channel, get a 7900 XT. It's gonna offer you more performance, more longevity, and a lot more. I'm gonna stop right there. <laughs> now, I think this next combo is honestly pointless because it's so damn fast. I tested it out in a $2,000 gaming PC build that I released earlier this year. It crushes anything at 4K. <laughs> like, I don't know. There's only one game where it struggled. And I'll tell you that game. But once again, pick yourself up a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D and either pair up with it a Radeon RX 7900XTX or if it came down in price, assuming it goes down in price, a 4080 Super. I'll repeat it again. This is so flipping fast. Like if you at all are worried about the performance of your computer, not just now, but in the future, this is the combo you wanna get because it's screechingly fast. Now, maybe if you're looking into this, I would say you might wanna wait 
for NVIDIA and AMD's next generation of graphics cards releasing this fall. Because if you're this kind of buyer, you probably want a flagship graphics card and it might be worth waiting 10 or so months for that new flagship graphics card from either AMD or NVIDIA. But if you needed something now, this is what you've got. And in my personal opinion, get the 7900 XTX because it is technically slightly faster than the 4080 Super, but more importantly, you can get this for below $1,000. Whereas that can't be said for the 4080 Super, which has an MSRP of $1,000, but currently it's retailing for about $1,200. If this were actually being sold for $1,000, I would be comfortable in recommending it because although it's slightly slower than the 7900 XTX, this does excel in ray tracing and path tracing, which is the one game that the 7900 XTX couldn't really do that well in, which only applies to right now Cyberpunk 2077 and Alan Wake 2 if you wanted the maximum ray tracing graphics, which those are only two games. But for anything else, both of these GPUs are gonna be so flipping fast, like, bruh. <laughs> but we aren't done yet, cause now it's time to have a little bit of fun. Now, let's say you had that inferiority complex I was just talking about, but it's really, really bad. You need a PC that can compensate for something. This is what you want to get. This is the fanboy PC combo. We have none other than an i9-14900KS for $600. I mean, this beats it in quite a few games for like half the price and half the power consumption. So, I mean, yeah, you can undervolt it, but who wants to do that? <laughs> Actually, no, it is smart to undervolt, but the smart thing to do. But if you wanted like that processor that tops the benchmark charts, then yeah, 4900KS by technicality, but sensibly, this is the better option. And then yeah, you're gonna perk up $2,000 for a 4090. I mean, what else are you gonna do? How are you gonna win those online arguments if you don't have a 4090? Pick one of these up that is probably gonna replace this fall with a 5090 for two grand. I dare you, do it. But anyways, there we go. So those are the best CPU and GPU combos you can look into using for your next PC build. And if you enjoyed this video and you wanna help me out, feel free to use the links in the description below for checking out any of these components. And if you've enjoyed this video, give it a like. And if you like these kinds of videos and you wanna see more of them, then definitely subscribe. I recommend it. It's a fun place here, but you also get to learn. So that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And this is the Skyrival channel, signing out.